I like to travel the world. I like to explore new places. I like to visit new countries and learn about new things. For many years, I've been searching the world. One thing I haven't found is the perfect textbook for computer architecture. My name is Ian McLaughlin. I am an associate professor in the School of Computer Engineering at Nanyang Technological University. I'm also a principal investigator here in the Earth Observatory of Singapore. I've worked in academia for about eight years and about 15 years in industry, building small embedded systems, computer systems, and working with computer architecture. In all those years, I've looked for the best textbook to teach my students. I've looked for the best explanations that will make sense for them in their life and careers. This is the sort of thing that most computer architecture textbooks will talk about. It's a standard desktop PC. On the other hand, today, most people will be working with systems that are more like this. This is an embedded computer. This standard desktop PC, like many servers and systems like it, contains a, a processor like this. It has a heat sink and a fan. And there may be about 100,000 of these types of systems sold every year. A computer like this which doesn't look like a computer. This is actually a Linksys WRT54G. Contains a processor inside that looks like this. Similarly, there's embedded processors in this Wii. And in such cool gadgets as this Nintendo DS. There are probably about 20 billion of these types of processors sold every year. The students that I teach, that I supervise, that I work with in industry, are far more likely to be designing this sort of system than they are to be designing this sort of system. So why do most computer architecture textbooks persist in teaching this as the view of a computer, when this is the view that we see today? In fact, many textbooks persist in describing large, room-sized mainframe computers, all the rage 50 years ago. I've looked for computer architecture textbooks that deal with these computers as much as they deal with these, but I just haven't found any. And this is why I decided to write my own computer architecture and embedded approach. In writing this textbook, I've taken a sharply different approach that's been informed by my years in industry and academia. In the first case, this book is written firmly from an embedded perspective. There are numerous examples of embedded systems and issues that will be useful to those people in industry who are working with computer architecture. I've also followed the ACM IEEE body of knowledge in computer architecture and organization as I wrote the book. I've tried to include elements in here that would fulfill the syllabus of the ACM IEEE. In the third case, there are many info boxes. There's many examples given. There's end of chapter questions. I've tried hard to make this pedagogy something that any student could pick up and just use. People will enjoy reading. I've tried to make it a friendly textbook and one that students will like as well as instructors.